guys, today's a special day in the shop. We have a motorcycle finish that we spent five years on and one we built 10 years ago that returned. This is the one that they both came back together. So this was on the East Coast for a few weeks. Uh, it's come back to us so we can do our final uh, testing and riding and photography on the bike uh, and a bit more, as well as this uh, bike we call Pyro that we built years ago. So it's Ducati Day over in this side of the shop uh, that came back in for general maintenance and a bit of cleanup. And then this machine, this bike we built 10 years ago. This is a bike we called and call the Hardly, because you know, it's hardly a Harley any longer. Good timing. Hey man, what's up? Hi. Hi, were you pooping? No, I was actually gonna go around this way. I saw y'all filming, so I went around the other way and you moved. Yeah, that's but okay. I will poop if you want to. Yeah, that's cool, go, enjoy. Um, so, this is a bike called the Hardly. Um, the owner of this bike was the first guy um, that I didn't know that commissioned a custom motorcycle from us. Prior to that, it was people paying us to build them bikes that already knew me and kind of taking a chance on us. This guy came in off the street, a guy named Tony, um, with a brand new stock 883 black, all black Harley Davidson. Uh, what is this bike? I think it's a 2009 or something new model. Anyway, and want us to build a full custom on it, inspired by a Deus custom that looks not at all like this motorcycle does now. Um, and I said yes, and then I kind of coerced him into some things. The reason we bought this motorcycle back is because although he loved the bike, in his words, he said the bike changed his, his life um, because he was so pleased to be involved in the creative project. He got married, and things changed in his life, and he quit riding. And he knew that it was just sitting for years uh, without the love that he'd previously given it. And um, that I always liked this bike. I really love this. It's my favorite Harley ever. He um, he agreed to sell it back to us at a price that we could we could pull the trigger on. So we bought it back. So as you can see, it's pretty dirty. It's been sitting for quite some time. I think the gas is. Oh yeah, that's at least maybe a year and a half or two years old. You can age these things pretty well which probably means the fuel system is completely um, clogged up. Um, I can see it's been dropped. The right peg is crooked, it's bent, we'll fix that. And it's just generally really, really dirty. I already adjusted the bars, they were adjusted up a bit too high for me. I pulled them back to where I think they should be. Good news is the hydraulics still work. Anyway, what is this bike? This uh, started off, like I said, as an 883, ended up as a 1250cc. Uh, Harley, so this bike has 100 foot-pounds of torque and 100 horsepower, custom ECU, custom exhaust, uh, obviously a custom intake, um, and uh, this thing hauls ass. about, I think it was 210 pounds uh, in the build, meaning it weighed 210 pounds more when we started than it did when we ended. And our goal wasn't weight savings, our goal was just to make it look this way. So anyway, Tony asked us to build him a bike that looked like this little low riding Harley thing that Deus built, which I'll show you a photo of. Um, and over the years, I kind of changed his perspective on what we should do. We wanted to kind of build this kind of higher up custom slick dirt track bike. Uh, again, this was 2011 and the dirt track thing wasn't really kicked off like as a style in the custom scene, but we really liked it and started off more of a cafe bike and then ended this direction. We made it with two different seats because I felt like this was just too flat and low, but good for two people. You can see we've got removable passenger pegs. This clips on so it's a little more I don't know, to me it's a it's a little nicer with this tail section on it, which you know is a cafe style. We don't really succumb to any any really standards or, or labels, but that's what that is. We've got a double walled oil tank here to hold the oil. Behind here we have the uh, battery, electronics, and all the wiring, and of course the gauge. Here we have a fuel tank that holds, I, don't, I can't remember, I think it's like three and a half, four gallons, which is more than the factory tank held. 
even though only it takes up this left side. The part that was most important to me at the time was I wanted this reveal kind of down between the cylinders. I wanted this shape to reveal the front cylinder, the rear cylinder, which is pretty, you know, expected, but, but to do it in kind of a unique way. Um, we built these custom triple clamps to house uh, GSX-R750 fully adjustable front forks that we, you know, kind of shaved and sanded. These triple clamps, I think, are some of the prettiest triple clamps we've ever made with this real simple uh, clamp, bar clamp. And we've got integrated switches into the bars on these LSL bars. We've got an integrated ignition switch you can turn off or on, uh, and then a hidden switch to, to turn it off. We've got a helmet uh, holder, helmet lock there, LED headlight, which was a big deal at the time. And then really one of my favorite pieces on the bike outside of the custom exhaust in the front end is the brakes. So you've got monoblock front and rear calipers, Brembo calipers, with a carbon ceramic, um, uh, it's actually a, it's actually a, a mixture of aluminum and uh, carbon to create these super lightweight discs that don't get hot. Uh, and then of course the custom wheels and Zyrtec tires. tires. Sure, they're not DOT, but whatever. They work really well. Uh, we maintain the belt drive because the belt drive, for whether you know it or not, is quite superior in many, many ways. Um, I really like the custom rear carrier for the disc. It all just kind of integrates really well. I share some cool memories of this bike. I got to race this at the Wheels and Waves Punks Peak Race in France in, I don't know what year, maybe 2014 or something. And I ended up finishing second out of a field of like 100. It is a handful of a motorcycle to ride, but it's a blast. And really, that's the best racing of my life because it was so fun and so competitive and so close. And I damn near won the whole thing, but Seb on his BMW, his dustbin BMW cut me off. I'm still gonna claim that had he not done that, I wouldn't have had to lift and I might have won, but whatever, it's okay. It was really, really fun. Anyway, that's it. That's the Hardly. Thanks for watching. Now's the time of video where most people ask for money or donations or whatever. I'm not gonna ask you for that. What I'm gonna say to you is, if you wanna see more videos and you wanna learn more of what we've learned, and you wanna see a deep dive into a lot of these topics, go to our website and buy something. We sell everything from motorcycle gear, helmets, uh, motorcycle parts, specialized tools. We sell lots of things and they've all taken us years to figure out what the best stuff is and we figured it out. So go to revivalcycles.com. There's some really good stuff there. Everything from like kick-ass hand grips from Posh to Radiance LED lighting and everything in between. We want to teach you what we know, but this stuff takes time and it takes real effort to make these videos and make them good for you guys. So go support us by helping yourself to the cool stuff you already need. And it helps us because we make a little bit of profit and then we can justify doing more videos. Thanks for your support.